I, uh, I know that Nintendo doesn't make Kirby. Hal does. Uh, it's just a better title. I'm sorry. Please forgive me! Canceled video games are tragic. We don't get to play games that look like a blast, and developers don't get to show off the hard work that they put into creating it, and nobody wins. Well, I guess YouTubers who get to make cancelled video game videos get a nice profit. Gee, I wonder what this video is gonna be about. What? Wait, what? It's, it's not about cancelled Kirby games at all? Did I just pull a clickbait? Well, kinda, sorta. While this video isn't about cancelled Kirby games necessarily, it is about a kind of Kirby game you can't easily play anymore. Re-releases of older games are very common in the games industry, and Kirby is no different. Between Nintendo Switch Online and the 3DS and Wii U eShops, rest in peace, sweet princes, or princesses, or emperors, you can get a lot of Kirby games. A lot of Kirby games. A lot of Kirby games. You notice I'm not saying every Kirby game here? Some games manage to avoid that ever so sweet sensation of being readily available to purchase in the modern era. And while the 3DS and Wii U eShops have closed their doors for good, I still like to consider those two, as well as the Switch, the gold standard for modern re-releases, at least at the time of this video. Both are still relatively modern, and while I know the 3DS is the mean here, both it and the Wii U are surprisingly easy to mod. The eShop closure is also recent enough to where I figure most people have already obtained the games they'd want to get. Point is, all three of these were great ways to get Kirby games, but that doesn't mean we got them all. And we're here to talk about them today. Just the games though, that's, that's kind of my thing. So no anime, no manga, and none of that stuff. Actually, believe it or not though, one of these games does not actually have a speedrun. And this isn't me building up to a weird segue of, and that game is, you giving the video a like, comment, and ringing the notification bell after subscribing kind of thing. Although that, that kind of worked out perfectly. If you would do those things, I'd appreciate it. Hello. And I bet that next segue is gonna be so good. It'll overshadow the fact that only 52% of you are subscribed and I'd really appreciate the subscription if you like my videos. Or even that I have a Patreon with cool perks like early access to videos that I specifically call the Puptreon. With super duper big thanks to my head padding fluffle fan pup trends, Dips Fiora, Biohazard, and remember, Miss K says Kirby, 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 that's a name you should know. Seriously, thank you guys. I love you so much. Okay, all right, I'm going way too deep into this plug, so we're gonna move on. Where were we again? Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, depending on how you wanna look at it, there's no speedrun for Kirby's toy box. I actually had to, uh, <laughs> route this one from scratch by myself. Toy Box was a game released for the Satellaview, which explains a lot as for why it hasn't been re-released. If you're not in the know, the Satellaview was this super nifty peripheral for the Super Famicom that actually connected through satellite broadcast to Satelloworld. It wasn't actually called Satella World, but man, wouldn't that be cool? But what matters is that it allowed players to download things like magazines and commercials or even games. It was super nifty, and while you couldn't fit a big game in there, we still got some pretty cool stuff out of it. There was an F-Zero game, you got a couple of Fire Emblem maps, and of course, you got Kirby's Toy Box. Kirby's Toy Box was actually a collection of games. You could only play one at a time, depending on when the satellite service was being streamed. That was one of the wild things about the Satellaview. You were placed on a timer for how long you could play the games. It made things like the Fire Emblem character that you could only unlock by playing for an hour even more hilarious. And while Toy Box didn't have any bizarre unlockables quite like that, it still had the time limit intact. I imagine it was very exciting seeing Kirby's Toy Box come up as the currently available game, especially with that preview for Kirby Superstar that came up every time. And then, the excitement as you got to play games like... Like baseball, and, and, and pachinko... And a multiplayer war sim of the robotic Rick the Hamster? Excuse me?! I'll be honest, I, I don't think very highly of Toy Box like at all, but that doesn't mean I don't think it should be re-released. 
This is far and away the rarest Kirby game ever made, one that most of the world never even got the ability to play. <laughs> Copy ability, get it? The ability to play. <laughs> it's dead for that one. Anyways, all the more reason to re-release it and allow more people to play it. It could either be in a Kirby collection of older games or a Satellaview collection. I'm really not picky, but at the end of the day, I just like to see the toy box games made readily available for anyone and everyone to play. Oh, and on the topic of Kirby games, I don't care about at all. I guess there's Kirby Slide too. Uh, this one is a huge meme in the community right now, for some reason, and bizarrely, there is a speedrun for it. It's 8.44 seconds. And that's all I've got. Uh, the music exists, I guess? I don't know, I'd still like for it to be re-released, even though, unlike all of the others, I actually understand why it's never been made available. I guess, you know, copyright and that stuff. That's the only reason I can think of, anyway. I don't know, I'm trying to think of anything else I can add, but I'm just out, so let's move on. But then, oh, what's this? A Kirby game that's been locked behind the sands of time that's actually good? Great even? Yes, yeah, somehow, outside of the original 2003 launch, we've never gotten our grubby little hands on Kirby Air Ride. Now, listen here, this game's good, yeah? But hey, the, the 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 critics they didn't they didn't like the game so much. Gave the game kind of a shall we say bad reputation. The critics they they're always out for the fun innovative GameCube games. Always out for the fun innovative GameCube games. Ah, jeez, boys, what are we gonna do about all these people who don't like Kirby Air Rides? Well, random bystander here. Social's on screen right now. Please go follow him. He's a good friend. Recorded lines for this video, even though he's never played Kirby Air Ride. I say we give him the suck. <laughs> okay, I didn't actually ask for that last part, but it's really funny, so I'm keeping it in. So unlike Toy Box, which has an entire satellite's worth of reasons as to why it hasn't been re-released, Air Ride's history isn't quite so... unique. There are barely any GameCube games that we've had the honor of seeing re-released, so it doesn't come as too much of a surprise that we're still waiting. It doesn't help that, traditionally, HAL Labs really never re-releases Kirby games. It's either for a big occasion, like the Dream Collection, or something like the Virtual Console or eShop, or Part-Time UFO, which isn't a Kirby game at all, they only cameo in it, but man, I love Part-Time UFO and more people seriously need to play it. Finish watching this video and then go buy Part-Time UFO. It's so good. Air Ride would actually be one of the easiest games to be made available again, considering it only requires one button to play. I hear a lot of people talk about things like Air Ride 2 or new city maps, but most people would just like the chance to play Air Ride easily at all, preferably online. Switch Online GameCube is a thing that's been rumored for a long time now, so this may be the most realistic game to see be re-released in the whole video. I wouldn't quite get my hopes up, but if we can get Amazing Mirror Online... ...eventually, then who's to say that we can't get Air Ride? At this point, I'd say it's more realistic than getting Superstar Ultra, at least. Uh, yeah, I'm sure anyone who knows anything about me saw this one coming. Kirby Superstar Ultra, my literal favorite piece of media ever, is locked to the DS. This bothers me less than you would expect. The DS is my favorite gaming device, so of course it stands to reason it's the only thing that can handle the best game ever made, but it's a real bummer when I want to recommend this game to people, seeing as how I find it to be the best starting point for the series as well. Which, by the way, is a statement that I still stand by. The variety of modes and styles really gives you an idea of what aspects of Kirby you really like, and which games in the series you're most likely to enjoy. Alright, I totally went off track there, sorry. But even though the 3DS can play DS games, which technically could avert what I'm saying about it, you actually still need to find a physical copy of Superstar Ultra. It was looking like everything would be okay here though, given that Canvas Curse, Squeak Squad, and Mass Attack were all released on the Wii U eShop. Superstar Ultra, the best-selling DS Kirby game as well as the best received for the most part, would surely be coming soon thereafter. 
But no, we can't have nice things. So Kirby Superstar Ultra never got to the Wii U. Neither the 3DS nor Switch let you play DS games digitally anyway. So the only way that you can play it between the 3DS, Wii U, and the Switch is to find a DS copy somewhere and play that on 3DS. It certainly gets the job done better than, say, time traveling to the late 90s, but it's still hardly what I would call convenient. It doesn't help that, by far, out of the games that have yet to be re-released, Ultra has the weakest reasoning for never being made publicly available in some way. Toybox has that awkward distribution in the satellite stuff, Kirby Slide has the 4 kids slash general Kirby anime stuff, Airide is on a console that has traditionally never seen re-releases, and the next game that we're going to talk about was a limited celebration release. Ultra, I guess, would take sales away from Superstar, but... Wait, what? That argument is actually really bad. I'm not even going to address it even further. But I can address the fact that there may be issues with the cutscenes. If you... Uh, and imagine hard enough that you're playing Superstar Ultra on the Wii U, you'll notice that your imagination has stronger hardware than the DS, so cutscenes are insanely sped up. This is, of course, an oversimplification, the imagination goes far deeper than that, but I still don't quite see it as a be-all, end-all excuse. Plenty of other... Uh, imaginations have imagined KSSU running fine, particularly the imagination of Melon DS. It's pretty easy to imagine that it wouldn't take much work to get it up and running on newer hardware without the cutscene issue. And that's really the only thing that's holding the game back. Or at least it was, now that the Wii U eShop is closed for good, and getting DS stuff on the Switch is... Well, it's, it's not that hard, actually, but getting Nintendo's DS stuff on the Switch is not happening anytime soon. Sooner the better, though. The sooner the better. But would you believe that we still have one game left? I, I hope so, given that I already said that we did before. It, it's Kirby's Dream Collection. And this one is a tricky case to talk about, since it isn't just a game. It's a compilation of six Kirby games, which I normally go eh to and shrug it off. But the Dream Collection had other nifty features as well, like the new copyability challenge stages based off the ones in Return to Dreamland, and a museum where you can view Kirby history, like how Kirby's Dreamland was released in 1992, or East Timor became the first new country of the 21st century in 2002, or in 2008, Barack Obama was elected President of the United States. Obama is canon to Kirby lore. Write that down. Save your Superstar Ultra. This is definitely a tricky re-release, especially considering it also came with a fiscal soundtrack CD and art book, both of which rule, by the way, and including them digitally, well, the correct choice, air quotes, wouldn't feel the same. Actually, holding that art book has a much better feel to it than looking at it on your Switch or your Wii U, you know? Anyway, I completely understand the initial hesitation, but I still feel a re-release would be fairly simple. Maybe not on Switch, given how an soul works, but if it came out on the Wii U, I, I think it'd have been fine. It it's similar to Ultra in regards to the you-can-play-Wii games on Wii U, but you need to find a Wii copy problem, so no sneaking in potential workarounds here. This one has the double whammy of never being released in Europe either, making a re-release an even better decision. With Return to Lux not including the Dream Collection Challenge stages, nor the true facts about US presidents for some reason, there's plenty here to give it another go. It may sound a bit weird since it is a compilation, but we've seen Mario All-Stars be in a similar spot, so hey, you never know what could happen with Kirby. You can even include it in an NSO bundle to keep it in line price-wise to what the Switch offers. Oh no, I did not just suggest that. Don't listen to me, please. No, 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 no! And yeah, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I don't actually really know how to end this one, so, uh, bye. Oh, jeez, boys. What are we going to do about all these guys who don't like Kirby Air Ride? I say, old chap, what are we going to do about all these people who don't like Kirby Air Ride? Oh, pip-pip-tooley.